Hello everyone, this is Sarfraz Khan, your database professor, and I'm making this short video tutorial to help you get started with lab four, that is physical data modeling or diagramming using MySQL's Workbench tool. Now in the previous lab, lab three, we used a tool called ERD plus to develop a conceptual data model. And now we will progress to the physical data model, which is the final data model, the final database design of our database. Before you start this lab, it is expected that you have reviewed all the lecture material, theory lecture material of week three and week four as the conceptual understanding of the topic is covered under, under week three and week four theory classes. So you should basically know that the database design goes through conceptual data modeling, then logical data modeling or diagramming, and then physical data modeling. Some important characteristics of a physical data model are that it must include all entities and attributes, which will now be converted into tables and columns. All columns must be allocated a data type so when you allocate a data type to a column, your physical data models are basically specific to an RDBMS. So logical data models and conceptual data models are not specific to any RDBMS, but physical data model will be specific to each RDBMS. So our physical data model that we are developing today is for MySQL. Same way Oracle has its own tool, Microsoft has its own tool and so on and so forth. Next, you must declare all integrity constraints, primary keys, foreign keys on your columns and your tables. Remember that up until conceptual and logical data model, many to many cardinalities may exist, but in a physical data model, you cannot have many to many cardinality. So I will use the same scenario that I have been using in the previous lab. I will create a a sample data model on a table called program and student. Okay. I'm going to create a sample data model for program and student. And then you have to replicate what I am demonstrating. Sorry for the background sound, guys. I think there's a truck passing. Sorry about that. I like to keep my windows open. So, uh, Yes, so once you have watched this video, you are expected to work on your lab four and repeat the steps to create the physical data model. So let us get started. The first thing is we will need MySQL RDBMS. I'm going to log into MySQL. Open that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe we installed MySQL in lab one. Now remember this icon here, the dolphin and the database. This is your RDBMS icon. This is your database engine icon. We now want to develop or design a data model. So the icon below it, this icon, is the data modeling icon. So I'm going to click on that. These are some of my older models. You may not have those. So I'm gonna click on this plus icon to create a new model. And there you go. A model can have many diagrams. I'm gonna add a diagram, but double click in the add diagram. It will by default take it as a EER diagram. We can save it later. And this is our work area. This is one way of placing a new table in the diagram. This are the different types of relationships we can have between the tables. You are expected to know what this one to one, one to many means. You are expected to know what the dotted line and a solid line represents. If you don't know this, please go back and read the week three and week four slides before proceeding. So let us start. I'm going to put up table, a new table, double click on that table, 
and I'm going to call this table, let us say, the program. In this program table, my first column is going to be program ID, which is integer, and it is also the primary key. The second column will be title, program title, and I will even make it where care of, let us say, 80. Let us say I want this to be a mandatory column. So I'm going to mark it not null. Next, let us say credit. And credit I'm going to keep as integer. And I'll just add one column called type. Like, you know, is it a hybrid program on campus program? So I'm going to add a column called program type. And I think... 20 should be sufficient, okay? So this is how you can create a table. Of course, I am just entering from my, you know, from my own requirement, but generally this information will, you will get from the conceptual or a logical model. Now you're converting a conceptual or a logical model into a physical model. For example, for lab three, you have this concept, sorry, lab four, you have this conceptual model. So what, how you will start, you, you either start from customer or you start from product and then follow this path. So customer will be a table and in that customer table, all these will be the columns, right? So read the lab description carefully. It gives you all the details of, you know, what data types to choose and so on. And then follow either from this end or follow from this end. Let us start. Now we add the second table. Again, I'll use, you can always close this, okay? Once you're done, you can close that part. So now I'm gonna add the second table, double click. And then I'm gonna call this table, let us say student. And it will have the first column as student ID, which I want to keep as the primary key. Then I'm gonna call, let us say first name should be not null, last name, again, should be not null. I'm just taking the email address. So these are, of course, all hypothetical requirement. And just to show you, I want to keep emails unique, okay? So this is a unique key. I'm gonna keep e-names unique. Oops, sorry, sorry, my bad. This is not email, this is, and this should be email. And I want to keep emails as unique. And what else? Yes, uh, I should have maybe a phone number also. Let's say mobile. And I can change the type or maybe 15 just to accommodate the international. And if you want, you can mark it unique. So I'm not going to do that now. And that's it. Once you are done with this, close it. Now, based on our business rule, we have to determine the relationships and the cardinalities of the relationship. So I'll give you two hypothetical scenarios. Let us say first scenario is each student must belong to one and only one program. And a program can have zero or many students. So I'm going to show you two different scenarios. Okay. The first scenario is a program can have zero or many students and each student must belong to one and only one program. Let us say this is the first scenario, okay? Hypothetical scenario. So now this is how you're going to add the relationships, okay? We want a one-to-many relationship. So we're going to choose this. First, click on the child table, then on the parent table. And please note, the program, program ID column got added automatically. So the foreign key got added automatically. Okay, so you don't have to add the foreign key. When you say that these two tables are in a one-to-many relationship, you have to click on the child table first and then the parent table and the foreign key will be added automatically. 
I'll show that again. I will select this relationship and I'll hit the delete on my keyboard. I'm deleting the relationship. It will automatically delete the, the foreign key as well. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take this child table, parent table. It will automatically take the parent table's primary key as a foreign key here. This red icon represents a foreign key. I can go into this table and I can always change the name of the column. I don't like the program program ID. I just prefer to call it program ID. Okay. If you remove this not null, so then the you know foreign key symbol changes. If you make this not null, then you know then this foreign key is mandatory. So this is again this would make students a weak entity. So right now the program ID information is needed for a record to be to exist in the students table. So this program ID foreign key is mandatory. So this is now becoming a weak entity. But if I keep it optional, then yes, program is parent, student is child, but student is also a strong entity. It is not a weak, it is child, but a strong entity. Again, these things are written in your theory notes, so you can go back and review them, but that's it. Now, second thing is you may have to sometimes play around with the, with the cardinalities and relationships. And if you want to do that, at the bottom here, you are, so we are in the default view, which is columns, but you have something called as indexes, which we'll study later in SQL. And if you come to foreign key, okay, this is where you can decide the cardinality. So you're going to select on this. You're going to double click on this, double click on this, and then come to foreign key. And this is where you decide the, you know, whether it is mandatory, non-mandatory. So if I make it identifying, this will become a solid line non-identifying and then the you know whether it is one to one one to many you can you can change these things from here okay you can change these things from here the referencing table is the child table the referenced table is the parent table the primary key will always be on the parent table side the foreign key will always be on the child table side okay so you can you can change all this information from here if you want to i don't want to do that so i'm going to delete this I'm going to close, not delete, sorry, I'm going to close this. So this is one way of working with relationships and cardinalities. Now, a second scenario, a hypothetical scenario, a program can have zero or many students, as well as each student can belong to one or more programs. Now what we are doing, we are talking about a scenario where a program can have zero or many students, but at the same time, a student can belong to one or more programs. So now we are talking about a many to many relationships. I want to show you this so that you understand how physical data models work with many to many relationships. As I have already listed here that in a physical data model, the many to many relationship, many to many cardinality cannot exist. It will not accept it. It can exist, exist at a conceptual or a logical level. So just to show you that again, I'm going to delete this relationship. And I'm going to add this many to many. Can you see this NMM? That basically means many to many relationships. So I'm going to click on this. This is the, hold on, before I do that, let me make some more space. I have a reason for doing that. So I'm going to just align it the best I could. And again, I'm going to take a many to many relationship symbol, child table, parent table, and have a look what it did. It automatically added this intermediate table, this associative table. If you again go back to your week three and week four, notes, you will learn something about an associative entity. Okay, an associative entity is used to resolve a many to many situation. So many to many, cardi many to many cardinalities can exist at logical and physical level, sorry, logical and conceptual level, it cannot exist in a physical model. So whenever you do that in a physical model, it will automatically add this intersection table and associative entity. Now, if you want to add more columns to this or want to change the column names, table names, you're going to double click on this. Uh, I'm just going to call this program underscore student. Generally, these tables are named like this program and student. And I'm going to I'm going to rename this. OK, I'm going to just call them 
program ID and this and let us say I want to store some more information. So what, what possible information could I store? Okay. So yeah, for each student, each program, uh, I wanna I wanna store the program. Suppose a student is registered in two different programs, right? So I want to store the program title as well. Uh, yeah, actually program title is there in the program table, so it will be a repeat. So let me think of something. Let me think of something. Let us say I just want to store the fees information, okay? I just want to show you that you can add extra columns if you want to, okay? And there you go. And I'm going to close this. So there are different relationships, different cardinalities, and this is how you can add them. The reason I'm showing you this is, and of course, you can again change the cardinality. So a program can have zero or many students. So this side, I want to keep it zero or many. So I'm going to go here, foreign key, and I'm going to make this uh referencing table student so I, I will remove this part and I'll, I'll not make it mandatory so then a program can have zero or many students and same way a student must belong to at least one program but can also belong to many programs so this mandatory money is one is okay here so this is how you can change suppose if you want to change this cardinality then you can of course go into the foreign key and just uncheck the mandatory part uncheck the okay but in this case, I do need the mandatory part, so I'm going to keep it as it is. And there you go. Uh, there are a few more general things, like you can add a label. Where is the label? Is this a label? Is this a label? No. So where is the label? Image, text object. So we don't have a label. We have something called the text object. And there it is and i'm going to call this text object with my name so surfrose lab 4 oops i think that's the name so it should go in the text field so again surfrose lab 4 and if you have a student id you should write it there okay my student id is bond and there you go and then, of course, there are some more requirements for your lab four. You should read the description, uh, the you know, all the information carefully. But this is the core part of it. This is the main part of it. Once you are done, you better save this model on your on your machine somewhere. Okay. But this is a model that will open only in Workbench. We basically need a screenshot, an image of this. So let me check if there is a way to export it into a, yeah, there it is, export it into a PNG file or a PDF, both are fine. So I, I will go with a PNG, lab four, I'm gonna keep it on the desktop. And so once it is there, this is my lab four that I just saved in a PNG file. This is what you need to upload on Brightspace, okay? So yeah, the intention here was to help you get started with lab four. Lab 4 has much more finer details. What should be the data type? What should be the naming convention? So please follow all of those things. And I will also make available a document called Getting Started with MySQL, uh, you know, uh, Workbench for data modeling. So this is a slightly lengthy document, but you can just quickly scroll through it just to know where to click for what thing, okay? With this information, I'm pretty confident that you should be able to complete your lab four by yourself. And after you have completed lab four part A, the part B will be a lab quiz. As you know, lab quizzes will have four attempts, sorry, three attempts until the due date. So the part B will be conceptual and it will be a, it will be a quiz. So please, uh, I don't mind if you wanna start early, start the lab lab attendance is required if you have any questions i can answer them in the lab session and then you can just upload it and you will be done with lab four thank you everyone for watching hope this helps see you all in the next lab or theory session Bye bye